Welcome to Chapter 7 of our course. This chapter covers how to apply the concept of external validity, or transferability, to implementation research. After this chapter, you will be able to Describe the concept of external validity Identify threats to external validity and factors that promote it Determine the key elements for Assessing external validity in implementation research We will also do a few practice exercises on assessing external validity this chapter is all about understanding external validity and why it's so important in implementation research. Let's start by describing what external validity is and how it relates to implementation research. Validity refers to the extent to which a concept, measure, or outcome is true and accurate. For example, the validity of a quantitative or qualitative measure of acceptability by community members to the use of insecticide-treated nets for malaria prevention will be the extent to which that quantitative or qualitative measure of acceptability truly captures the perception of community members regarding the use of insecticide-treated nets. Simply put, we want to make sure our measurements truly capture what the community thinks. External validity is a subset of validity. It refers to how well we can take what we've learnt in one place and apply it somewhere else. For example, let's say we found out that a certain treatment works well for river blindness on cosirciasis control in rural Nigeria. The external validity of that finding is about how much we can trust that it would work just as well in a different place, like rural Indonesia. Can we trust that what worked in Nigeria will also work in Indonesia? Assessing external validity helps us figure out if research findings from one place can be applied to another, making it easier to use research evidence in real-life situations or policies. In comparison to efficacy research, which checks if an intervention works under controlled conditions, external validity matters more in implementation research. That's because implementation research looks at how well an evidence-based intervention works in the real world, where things can be quite different from one place to another. Even though doing research in real-world settings might affect how sure we are about the results, or internal validity, it's often easier to apply those findings to real life. That's why in implementation research, it's really important to describe everything about how the research was done, the context, the intervention, how it was adapted, and how it was put into action. This way, we can better understand if the findings can be applied elsewhere. The term viable validity is used to highlight a more hands-on approach. This means involving the people who are actually going to use the intervention and getting their thoughts and experiences to see if it's practical, affordable, suitable, evaluable, and helpful in the real world. This approach helps make sure the intervention can actually work outside of a research setting. External validity is sometimes called generalizability. This refers to how much of an initial study's research findings can be applied elsewhere. Think of it as figuring out if what we learned in one place can be useful somewhere else too. Other terms used are transferability, which is similar to generalizability, and transportability, which involves predicting how well an intervention will work in a new setting, based on how similar or different it is from where it was first tested. It's like saying, given what we know, can we expect this to work elsewhere? The proximal similarity model helps with determining the potential for generalizability by comparing findings such as the evidence of the intervention's effectiveness, its implementation strategy, or implementation processes. This helps researchers to gauge how people, places, settings, and times of conducting a study are similar. By comparing their study to another context, and using that to evaluate to what extent they can generalize their study to that new context. For instance, let's say an evaluative research of the community-directed treatment strategy for the prevention of river blindness was conducted in rural Nigeria, among older populations of a lower socioeconomic status, living in close-knit communities, during the rainy seasons. If the researchers would like to generalize the finding from this research study to a rural context in another country, for example Indonesia, they would have to assess to what extent the population in rural Indonesia, comprising of older population, of lower socioeconomic status, 
and living in close-knit communities during the rainy seasons, is similar to the study in question. Let's look at the next term mentioned, transferability. If an intervention worked well in one community, the primary context, you may want to know if it can work in a different community, your target context. To determine transferability, you will apply a systematic approach to determine if what worked in your primary context will work in your target context. You will do this by first collecting information on three key constructs, the population or person, the environment, and the intervention. You will then determine how these interact among each other to produce the outcome at a particular level, be that national, subnational, or local, organizational or individual levels in the primary context. Essentially, the question being asked is are the people, the environment, and the intervention similar enough here to make it work, like it did before? You will look at the similarities and differences between the two contexts to decide if the intervention can be transferred successfully. Finally, let's look at the term transportability. This gives us tools to do this in a more formal way. First, it helps us figure out if the findings from one setting can be used to make accurate estimates in another setting. Then, if it can, transportability helps us predict what would have happened if the study had been done in that new place instead. It's like asking, can we apply what we learned here to figure out what would happen there? It's similar to transferability, but transportability gives us tools to do this in a more formal, mathematical way. This means that, using the data we have, we can actually quantify how much the intervention would work in the new place by looking at differences between the people in the original study and the people in the new context. Now that we have spent some time getting to grips with the concept of external validity and the different terms used for it, let's look at what factors would threaten external validity and what needs to be in place to improve external validity. There are four main areas that can threaten our ability to generalize a study to a different context. 1. Population. This refers to the people involved in the study. They may be less diverse, or less sensitive to the health problem in question, or sicker. How much they're involved in the intervention process can vary, which can affect how well the findings apply elsewhere. 2. Setting or environment. This is about where the study took place. If the setting is very homogeneous or less diverse, or if there are unique features that make it different, it could affect how well the findings transfer. Sometimes, the place for the study isn't chosen randomly, it's picked for specific reasons, which can make it harder to apply the findings to other places. 3. Intervention or strategy. If this was arrived at without a strong conceptual basis or rigorous study, to delineate its core element and mechanism, it might not work the same way somewhere else. 4. Outcome. If the interventions or strategy are linked to single outcomes, measured by changes in one parameter, then it may be more easily generalized, compared to interventions or strategy linked to complex outcomes. If it's more complicated, like looking at different aspects of how well the intervention was accepted, it might not be as easy to use the findings in another place. Now, let's take a moment to look at those factors that improve external validity. As a researcher be sure to take a moment, in your preparation phase, to properly identify the relevant stakeholders. Make sure to involve them in study planning and evaluating evidence, and be sure to take note of their concerns. When designing your intervention, use a conceptual model that considers internal and external validity, as well as different contextual factors. Identify places with different contexts to conduct the research and use a mixed method approach that looks at quantitative, qualitative and economic information. When selecting participants for the study, use a representative sampling. Diversify the study participants in order to have subgroups for analysis. Involve as many community members as possible. When selecting participants, be sure to first identify and describe the characteristics of the target population, compare the participating population to the target population, and analyze the difference between participants and possible refusals. When you start to develop the intervention, use interventions based on scientific evidence, 
leaning on existing guidelines as much as possible and analyzing feasibility in different contexts. Be sure to consider the cost in the development of the intervention. Once you move on to the implementation phase of your intervention, make sure you emphasize the intervention and not the associated factors like training and supervision. Implement the intervention at different levels of intensity and be as faithful as possible to the intervention, noting any changes observed during implementation. Use easy-to-measure outcomes for your intervention and diversify by using multiple outcomes to assess generalizability and context. Develop self-reporting methods within the populations to facilitate sustainability. In data analysis, apply rigorous methods to determine the study effects. Perform subgroup analyses to look for differences in study effects comparing different population subgroups. Perform analyses according to different exposure levels and sensitivity analysis to take into account the variations of the characteristics on the effects. Carry out cost effectiveness analysis if possible and triangulate the results between the different data. Finally, when considering maintenance and sustainability of the intervention, be sure to identify the systems that need to be in place for the study to be disseminated and its effects maintained. Obtain stakeholders' inputs across different levels throughout the different study phases, planning, design, implementation, and dissemination. Identify existing communication channels for disseminating the study findings with the health system. Create different products that can be used to describe the added value of the study to future adopters and various stakeholders. Knowledge of these different factors makes it possible to develop an evaluation grid for assessing external validity in an implementation research project. Now, let's consider a broad approach for assessing external validity. We pose some guiding questions that researchers, practitioners, and decision makers can apply when assessing the external validity of findings from an implementation research study, intervention, or strategy. There are four themes to consider when evaluating external validity. 1. Units of the study or population. 2. Treatment or intervention. 3. Outcomes. And 4. Settings or environment. While tools such as the Pragmatic Explanatory Continuum Indicator Summary, PRESIS, do exist to guide researchers in evaluating the external validity of a study, these tools mostly apply to implementation research designed as clinical trials and may not be applicable to other types. The four themes described here are, however, applicable to all kinds of implementation research study design. Let's look at them in some more detail, including questions researchers can ask themselves to assess the external validity of their study. First let's start with questions researchers can ask themselves regarding population. Is the study population culturally and ethnically diverse? Does the study inclusion criteria take into account gender and other equity variables such as socioeconomic status or rural or urban status? Is the sampling adequate? And do the study participants represent the intended target population? Let's move on to questions surrounding intervention. Was the intervention developed based on prior evidence published in literature or existing guidelines? Was the intervention delivered as intended? Is it displaying fidelity? Is the intervention sustainable, that is, can it be continued given current arrangements within the health system? Is the intervention acceptable to stakeholders? Are the comparison groups for establishing the effect of the intervention adequate? Next, let's look at questions to help researchers around the theme of environment. Was the study conducted in multiple and multilevel areas? Were all the relevant stakeholders involved? Were temporal, economic, political and social contextual factors taken into account? Was a valid contextual framework used, for example, the Consolidated Framework on Implementation Research? And accompanying the contextual framework, was a relevant guideline or tool assessment applied? Finally, let's look at questions researchers can ask themselves around the final theme of outcomes. Were multiple outcomes assessed, including clinical, 
behavioral, implementation and services outcomes? Is the primary outcome of the study relevant to the target participants and setting? Were any self-reported implementation outcomes by the population assessed during the study follow-up? Were the study outcomes analyzed for any dose-response effect? Were there any subgroup effects on outcomes observed? The extent to which an implementation research study can answer yes to each of these questions could provide an indication of the external validity of that study. Such external validity assessments do not have to wait until the end of the study, but can be conducted before, during, and after the study. Let's review what we have learned in this chapter. External validity is a crucial aspect of implementation research studies and can be described as generalizability, transferability, and transportability. These terms are reflected in the following questions. How easily can certain aspects of this study be generalized? Is the new setting similar enough that the study can be transferred to this new context? Can we apply what we learned in the original context to understand what would happen in the new context? External validity is assessed through the populations, intervention environments, and outcomes. The assessment of external validity facilitates the translation of research evidence into practice or policy. It is important for implementation research teams to consider evaluating external validity in each of their projects. That's it for Chapter 7 dealing with external validity. Before you go, take a moment to consolidate what you have learnt by putting it into practice. Download this chapter's supporting resource material and complete the activity there. Once you have completed the activity, please join us for Chapter 8.